All right, good morning, everybody. Um, Aaron Heiser of Baker's Leather Supply, and today we're going to make a sling bag, but more than that. Um, today's video is actually sponsored. Um, I know, that's kind of weird for us, right? But uh, anyway, the good folks over at Justin Boots reached out, and they wanted me to make a project video for them, and they wanted to feature me on their website about... Uh, uh, they're doing different makers and stuff like that and so they wanted me to make something for them so um, took their logo and uh, incorporated it on the into the tooling on this uh, this here sling bag I've been working on it all day long it is now I said good morning but it is now six something p.m. and I started this this morning at 3 30 a.m. and uh, anyway it's been a long day um, but anyway, we're super excited that, um, that they, they reached out to us, and um, I, I just, it's, it's really awesome that someone appreciates what we do here and, uh, and, and wants to be a part of that. So, um, Justin uh, Boots, uh, they, I'm going to send them this bag, and they're going to do some sort of a uh, giveaway or something with it. So, pretty exciting stuff. You, you could have one of my bags in your, in your possession. Um, be be glad because I really wanted to keep this one it turned out amazing and I'm so excited about it so um, anyway stay tuned grab a bucket of popcorn something it's, it is a long video but step by step we're gonna build this entire bag throughout the day so I uh, hope you enjoy it and again thank you to Justin Boots for, for sponsoring this content and um, let's get started all right, so this is not a video on tooling, but I spent a lot of time tooling this, and I happened to have the camera rolling while I did it, so I thought, let me just put it in there, and I'll make it go really fast. First thing I'm doing right here is I'm using my swivel knife to cut out all the lines, and then I go and I go ahead and work on my flower. I do the flower center, and then the uh, the the pear shading and. Uh, I do the same thing on the all the leaves, and then after that, I grab my uh, my bevelers and I go to town making all of the lines stand up from each other, deciding which lines are, are, are higher on the image and which ones are lower, and that way it, it gives it the depth and everything that it needs. Um, I this is actually a pattern that I've tooled before on uh, another project. Uh, did the whole video on it but it was the uh, the toolable fanny pack video that we did so if you really want to see the in-depth tooling and everything you can go watch that video and uh, it'll show you everything you need to see I go back after all the, the backgrounding is done I do some swivel cuts and um, do some lifting to get the pedals to really stick out and have a 3d effect and then I draw a border on it and I uh, I did some uh, geometric stamping at the bottom near the Justin logo and I I posted a picture of it on on social media and a lot of people really like the geometric stamping I did so I went ahead and did a separate video just on that it's just a couple of minutes long um, but you can find it here on my YouTube channel as well All right, first thing we're going to start with is uh, we'll have all of our pieces cut out uh, according to the template and um, yeah and we're going to talk about the the skiving on each piece where it needs to be so these two trapezoid shaped pieces are identical and the skive goes all the way around the outside it's about a half an inch deep all of the the skiving on this except for one piece the skives are about a half an inch deep on them um, and roughly the the thickness uh, half the thickness of the leather but these two pieces are what connect the shoulder strap to the main body of the bag and you want to sky all the way around both of them okay this is the front panel of the bag on this particular one where this is where we're going to sew our, our tool piece that we we made right up here and then there will be a pocket down here um, that they'll pretty much uh, almost touch so this one also same sky all the way around this is the back panel of the bag. That's why it's kind of trapezoid shaped in the in the top and not not rounded like the front panel is. Okay, and once again, we're going to sky all the way around the whole thing. This is the front pocket of the 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 bag, and it's going to end up folding in half, and a zipper will be sewn right here. And um, we're going to sky all the way around this piece as well. 
this is a zipper gusset for the very top front of it. Um, basically, I did the exact same skive on it, but with the width that it is, I mean, it's, it's barely over an inch wide, so pretty much the entire thing just got thinned out. That's fine. This is the front top portion right here. Uh, kind of a funny shape, but once again, we skived every single side of it. Oh, sorry, we did not skive every single side. Um, the ends, I did not skive. And uh, it's not necessarily that important. If you accidentally skive them, that's fine too. But um, it does help with the rigidity of the joint on the sides of the bag if you, if you don't skive that. Now we've got two of these pieces. One of them is going to be the shoulder strap support. If you have the means to do a really wide skive on it, it's going to fold closed like this and then a one inch um, leather uh, strap sewn down it. Um, and that's, that's how it'll be made. We've done that on several other bag making videos that we've done. Um, but anyway, if you have an abil the ability to do a big wide skive all the way down both sides of it, then that's great. But this leather itself is actually thin enough. I, I didn't need to skive it at all for that piece. The other is the bottom gusset, and I skived every single side of it. Okay? And that's it. That's all the pieces and what we've skived on them. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the, uh, we're, the next thing we're going to do is build our zippers. Uh, and after the zippers are built, a lot of this bag is just going to be completed right there at the sewing machine and just kind of going as we go. Alright, so we're going to build two zippers for this bag. Um, the first one we're going to build goes onto the little front pocket and it's only as wide as this piece of leather here. The other one goes, um, it's the, the one that opens the main part of the bag. It's, uh, it's going to be a little bit longer. I'm going to completely show you how to build the first zipper and then the second one I'm just going to show you how we measure it and then you're going to build it the exact same way. Okay, the very first thing I'm going to do is put my slide on my zipper. Okay, so I'm going to separate the portion of my zipper here. Actually, it'll just I'll just separate the whole thing. It'll be fine. Okay, and I'm going to put one part of it in one end of my little slide here. I'm going to put the other part of it in the other end of the little slide there. Now, be very careful when you separate your zipper entirely that you don't accidentally turn one of the pieces all the way around because it won't. They'll only go in one way. They will not twist around and go in the other way too. So anyway, I put one piece in, pulled it back a little bit, put the other piece in, kind of wiggled a little bit, and then it zips. Ain't it cool? So here we go. Now I'm going to show you how we measure the zipper. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take my, uh, my little zipper window here, and I'm going to put it over this piece. Okay. And I'm going to take a magic marker. This one happens to be a Sharpie, but you know, whatever. It's just a marker. Um, and I'm going to mark out the last teeth I can see within that window. Just going to pan black so that I can tell which ones they are when I take the, the that uh, tan piece of leather away there. Okay. And then up here at the other end, I've got to kind of push it together because it wants to separate way up there. Make sure that this didn't move. And I'm going to mark out the exact same thing, just a couple of teeth, so I know where I'm at, okay? I'm being very careful not to accidentally mark my leather. Now I'm going to move my leather so that I can actually mark that really well. And I know which teeth to knock out. Okay, I always start with a closed end of the teeth, all right? I've got my Zipper Buster 5000 here. Okay, on our website we just call this a zipper tooth remover. It's, uh, it's made for a number 3 and a number 5 zipper. We also have a number 10, but we don't need that today. This is a number 5 zipper. So, this is a number 5 zipper. I put the number 5 end against it. Okay, and it, it basically just straddles the, uh, the teeth of the zipper there, and then I give it a good whack. And I just, I, the teeth I, I just did that to are the ones that I marked. And then I'm going to work my way away from the main body of my zipper towards the end here. And I'm going to knock out about four teeth on each side, so eight teeth total. And that pretty much takes me all the way to the end of the zipper. Okay. Peel that little tool off there. Give my zipper a little shake or whatever to knock all those loose teeth off now. There we go. I've got one stubborn tooth that didn't break, so I'm gonna go ahead and break it again. 
same same method applies. This is the closed end of the zipper, so I'm going to use what's called the bottom stop. Okay, and it's this little rectangular shaped piece that's got four teeth on the back of it. Okay, so I'm going to move. I've got a piece of rubber down here, and I'm just going to take this thing and I'm going to press it right up against, but not over, the last remaining teeth. So the, the ones I didn't bust out, I want that sucker right up against them. If I put it too far back, then I risk being able to unzip it too far and then the slide will come off and you'll never get it back on. Okay, I used a hammer to just tap that into my leather and then I'm going to use a pair of pliers to bend those little prongs on the back to bend them in. And that will set the bottom stops of my, uh, my zipper. The only pair of pliers I have in my office are a uh, pair of lasting pliers and uh, I don't know if they're going to complete this mission or not, but we're sure going to try. Yeah, good enough. Okay, and once I've got those kind of bent over a little bit, I'm going to hammer them down nice and flat. And there we go. I now have confidence to be able to do this and know that my zipper slide is not going to come off. If my zipper slide did come off, we would call this take two and you would have never seen that. Just saying. All right, now I'm going to go up here to the other end where I've got the other teeth that need to be busted off. Okay, and it's a little bit uh, more time to staking because the um, time taking time, I don't know, takes more time. <laughs> because um, since it's not zipped up, I have to do one side and then the other with my little zipper tooth remover. So, I'll bust off a couple of teeth here. And again, I'll bust off four, six, eight on each side, whatever. I want to have lots of room that I can sew this thing in without accidentally sewing through some teeth. Okay, back in the day, I had no clue about really how to work zippers, and I used to just carefully, carefully sew through teeth. It wasn't the right answer, but it was an answer. <laughs> All right, so I did one side, now I'm gonna do the other side. Carefully going to sweep all these little brass pieces up before they end up in my vinyl flooring. <laughs> we have a whole class of people making bags. There's lots of little brass pieces everywhere. I feel bad when they, we use a venue that has carpet in it, always ask them for a vacuum. They're like, oh, we got that. I'm like, mm -mm, you better let me. I want to be invited back. All right. The little top stops look like little bitty brass C shapes, okay? Super easy to use. I put them in my pliers. Oops. Should have walked over to the store and got my uh, regular pliers out of my other toolbox. They're still packed in there from the Sheridan show. Anyway, I got it right there in my uh, jaws there. And I'm just gonna put it right at, up against the last tooth and give it a squeeze. And there it is for eternity. It's not going anywhere. And then I have to do the exact same thing on the other side of the zipper. There we go. And now I have the confidence to zip it this way and know that it's not coming off. So, I'm going to check my measurement one more time by zipping it up and putting my little piece back over it. And if I did all this wrong, then I need to do it again. But I should have it right. Look at that. These brass end, these ends are just right at the end of the leather, and this end is right at this end of the leather, so this is a successful zipper. Now, I said I was going to show you the other one too. There are, in all your cutout pieces, there's one strip that is this long. It's about, uh, I don't know, 13, 14 inches long? 13 and a half, uh, pretty good. Um, anyway, we're going to do the exact same thing as far as all the measuring and everything, but we want the zipper to be about a half inch in from each end. Sorry, I'm off camera. 
a half inch in from each end of this, okay? So the first thing I need to do, once again, is put my slide on. And I have more slides laying here. I know I do. There they are. in one side, slide in the other side, wiggle together and pull. I said wiggle together and pull. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So I'm going to lay it up against this, uh, this long piece here and like I said I'm just going to measure a half inch in from each end and make my, my little black marks to, uh, to measure where the zipper will stop. And then on the open end, I'll put the open stops and on the closed end, I'll put the closed stops. So when I come back, that'll be done and we're gonna start assembling this bad boy. All right, folks, so here we go. Um, we've made our two zippers. Now we gotta, um, we're gonna go ahead and um, place them where they need to be so that when we get over the sewing machine, our job is easier. So this uh, small one goes inside of the little frame that we've sized it for. Okay, so I'm gonna once again just check it, make sure it fits, make sure everything looks great. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some uh, double-sided sticky tape. I'm gonna put it right along the edge of the leather. do with this is I'll, I'll stick the zipper to this but then I stick this to the bag for both sew lines okay uh, I don't sew it to this and then sew this to the bag I sew I stick this to the bag and sew both sew lines um, the frame really is almost just decorative you could just stick this into the bag and sew it in but this has a nicer um, appearance I believe so I'm going to go ahead and pull the, the backing off my double sided tape Hopefully. Seriously? There we go. All right, and then I'm gonna start at one end and I'm gonna press it down gently. Gotta make sure that I get my uh, little zipper pull out of the way there. I'm gonna press it down real gently. And I wanna make sure that I get the zipper going right down the center of the opening there and I, I don't want the zipper to waver any I don't want it to go back and forth and look like some crazy train tracks I want it nice and straight okay so there we go there's that one I got some overhang right here so what I can do is just go ahead and trim that off I want to make sure that that tape that zipper tape catches the first sew line but I don't care about it catching the second one As a matter of fact I don't want it to catch the second one so I'm going to trim that off just a little bit back here with a pair of scissors. Just like so. And then the same on the back. I need to shorten the back end of it just a tiny bit here. There we go. Now. I'm going to take more double sided tape and make it to where this thing will stick onto the bag. that part of the bag. So when this goes on here, it's going to look like this. Um, there's a couple of different ways that I could stick this on here and make sure it's good and straight and everything. One of the best ways would be just to look at the back side. And as long as your zipper was nice and um, nice and centered, then te theoretically it should fit just real nicely right back there. Okay. 
So I'm going to do it that way, and I'm just going to barely press it on there in case I need to remove it and restick it. turn it over I'm gonna hold it parallel to me or perpendicular to me I guess you should say and just check to make sure everything's good and flat and straight and I think we're good when we go to the sewing machine we're gonna sew two lines one on that inner circle there and one on the outer circle there that's gonna look real sharp okay now um, this is not necessarily part of the build but it has to happen but there's my maker's mark on a, a piece of uh, similar leather um, it's the, the this is the wicket Craig russet um, technically it's skirting but I just call it tooling leather because I never actually order it in the skirting weights of uh, you know 12 to 15 ounce I always order it in thinner stuff that actually I can actually use in my shop I'm not a saddle builder but I do love this skirting leather So I'm going to take and uh, just stick this sucker on here kind of mid pocket. And I'll tell you what, just to be on the safe side, I will grab a ruler and uh, make sure to center it because, well, that would be terrible if I don't. Again, this one. This project, uh, the, the folks over at Justin Boots have bought this project already and they're going to do some sort of a contest or giveaway or something with it. So I want it to be as nice as it can be because there's my name right alongside their name. So I better take some pride in it, right? It just stinks because I really like this red color. I'd love to keep this one. <laughs> so anyway. All right, so there's that. We're gonna take that to the sewing machine just like that, but we might as well prep our other zipper while we're here. So the next one is going to go along uh, this piece, okay? Super easy to do. I cut the excess, you know, we busted the, the teeth off a half an inch in from the ends of this, and then I cut the excess off to where it matches right at the ends of it, so super easy to figure that out. So I'm gonna take my, uh, my quarter inch tape here, I'm just going to put it right along the edge. Like so. I'm going to pre-fold that over just so I know it's going to fold right where I want it to once I get that tape exposed. Okay, and I want it to fold right at that quarter inch mark. There's not a ton of room on this little gusset. Um, and the rest of it has to be part of the bag seam, so kind of a big deal. Okay, and every time I fold something over like this, I do two or three finger widths at a time. Otherwise, you'll have little scallops in your fold that maybe you'll notice them, maybe you won't. I notice them, and it irks the heck out of me. I'm sure 99% of my people I make things for don't care or don't notice but if we're not constantly striving to do better why are we bothering okay so there we go now this is where um, we kind of need to decide you know how this zipper is going to face um, is it going to be for a right-handed user or a left-handed user in the case of this bag, I, I don't know who's going to end up with it, but considering like 90% of people probably are right-handed, maybe maybe don't don't uh, crucify me if my uh, my statistic is off there. I'm just taking a guess, but anyway, I, I feel like I've got a better chance if I make it for a right-handed person. 
So what that means is, um, when I tape this on here, I'm going to tape it on here, let's say it's facing away from me with the zipper slide closed, I'm going to tape it on here on the right hand side. Okay, and that way when the bag is, is worn, that means that the zipper end is up on top if it's being worn to the right hand side. Uh, it's pretty confusing to talk about without having one of these bags in front of me, but anyway. Alright, so I'm going to flip this back over. I'm going to put another piece of tape on here. And I don't want it to come out to that folded edge because I don't want to see the sticky tape in my finished project. Okay? As everything, well, this will be sewn, but there is some tape holding it together until it gets sewn. Um, I've had people marvel that I use tape in my project. And I'm like, well, I mean, I also sew it, but, you know, i got to hold it to get it sewn. Alright, now I'm just going to stick it on there on the right-hand side of the zipper. And I want to make sure that I leave enough clearance that the zipper slide can move freely without rubbing up against leather because that will prem prematurely wear out the bag if your zipper slide is wearing holes into your leather. Okay? Now, when we go to the machine, we're going to go ahead and sew that, but what we need is the other part of it that we're going to sew to it afterward. Okay? I did a lot of math to figure out the curvature of this versus the straight line of this and how long one needed to be to be the same as the other. Um, so yeah, my brain hurts after doing that. <laughs> so anyway, it's all in the pattern. Y'all are, are going to get to reap the benefit of that headache. So I'm going to kind of pre-fold this a little bit on that skive. And then I'll put my tape on it and then I will uh, fold that over and then once this straight line is sewn we're going to sew that zipper to this curved line and then it won't be straight anymore. It will not lay flat anymore after we do that. It will always have a shape to it after that besides flat. Okay and again I'm just going to pre-fold this piece over but I'm not going to stick it to the zipper until after the flat work of the zipper is done because it just makes it harder to do the flat work if it's not flat anymore. Almost like that makes sense, huh? Alright, so let me pull the, uh, let me zoom out just a tiny bit here so we can, there we go, so we can see the entire piece at once. going to carefully fold that and your piece is going to kind of roll up a little bit that's okay it'll all work out but in the beginning it will how this ends curling up and everything that's that's fine that's the natural shape of what it's going to do anyway so we might as well just let it do it come back I'll uh, have the sewing machine moved over here in the light and um, we'll do some sewing it'll be a good time all right so I got my sewing machine set up this is a Cobra class 18 from the leather machine company I'm using a size 20 needle and a size 138 thread because I always forget to mention that people always ask hopefully I got that so um, I have set it up to where my stitches are about eight stitches per inch I feel like that's a good size for this thread and this this project um, stitch, is, uh, stitch length is a variable thing. A larger project, larger stitches, smaller projects, smaller stitches, things like that. Um, so anyway, uh, there's a little bit more prep work we need to do. I forgot about uh, these two little trapezoids. There's a short end, a short edge, and a long edge. And we need to go ahead and pre-fold and, um, and tape down the short edges on those. Okay, so that top edge. Uh, we're going to sew those, so we need to fold them down first. So, just like what we did with that other piece, we'll just run a piece of tape across there. Pull the back off. 
and stick her down. Stick her, stick her. Okay, we'll do the exact same thing on the other little trapezoid piece, once again on the short side, which will be the top side of this project. Um, minus the shoulder strap itself, this is the highest point of the project. It's the top of the bag. Nah. Sometimes I get a little crazy and pull all the tape off with the paper. But anyway. There we go. Alright, and I'll just go ahead and, and sew those little lines. Uh, the 138 thread I'm using on this project is dark brown. Um, normally I like kind of a light colored thread if I'm using a darker leather, but there's a couple of different color variations and stuff in here, and I think if we just stuck with a darker brown thread, it would be a little bit more conservative and uh, work out more for everybody. Not everybody likes a contrasting stitch color like I do, and that's okay. So I am sewing this where the, the stitch line is about a little more than an eighth of an inch from the fold. And that's going to be the pretty much my standard on, uh, on all of this. You know, just one second, I'll hold it up to the camera so you can see. scissors away and just get my little flippers here. Goodness. Alright. So there it is. There's my stitch line about an eighth of an inch from the fold. Okay. Same thing on the other side, or the other piece. I am doing a back stitch to begin and end that stitch. Um, <laughs> even though that will wrap around and be part of an in interior scene. Uh, still a healthy habit to be in to do the back stitch. Okay. Alright, so those two are done. Now I'm going to sew down the edge of that zipper right there. And then I'm going to sew down this uh, the, the pocket zipper here, and then I'll come back and sew these two pieces together. Okay, so once again, about an eighth of an inch from the fold. I'll use the inside of my presser foot here, my center foot, as my guide. And uh, that's how I know where to stay. This machine has a um, servo motor, which means, kind of like the gas pedal on a car, if I press it lightly, it goes slow. If I press it harder, It'll go faster. Um, for anybody asking, yes, this entire project could very easily be hand stitched. There's nothing difficult about hand stitching it. It's just time consuming. And time is one thing that I just don't have, and so I cannot hand stitch this bag. So. Plus, I got this really cool sewing machine, you know? Alright, so there we are, stitched right down the edge of the zipper. Beautiful. Um, always turn it over too and make sure that, yep, there I am. I'm, I'm on the zipper tape. I didn't come off the edge of it, so that's a good sign. I mean, today may be a good day, right? Alright, I'm going to set those two little pieces aside for a moment, and I'm going to go ahead and stitch around this zipper. Okay, and like I said, we're just going to we'll sew around the, uh, the inside circle first, and then we'll come back and sew around the outside circle. No big deal. the circle here if you're if you're new to sewing machines biggest thing I can tell you about a turn like this is make all of your turning motions while the needle is down in the leather if you do not then you risk having um, uneven stitches or even crooked stitches 
but it really does help mitigate that if you do all of your turning motions while the needle is down. up the other side. This bag is not a very difficult build. It was a difficult pattern to come up with, but the build on it is fairly simple and uh, there's, there's nothing really tricky or hard about it, even though there's a couple of curves and things like that. So it's, it's just uh, it's a great bag and it makes a really good project. Um, these have been really popular lately. Um, I actually designed this a couple of years ago and gave a couple of classes on it, but I didn't really do anything with it. Um, but now they seem to really be popular, the sling bag style. So why not come back out with the pattern, get the videos made, you know, all that fun stuff. The stuff people know me for. So I overstitched my first couple of stitches there so that I could uh, lock them in. Now I'm going to go and sew around the outside of that piece. And if you notice, I'm going to sew it the opposite direction. Okay, reason being is because I always want this side presser foot here to be on... I don't want it to run along the edge of what I'm sewing. I want it to be down there in the middle of it. Okay. Um, all of my stitch lines are like that because again, I, if it falls off the edge, then I have a problem. Again, back to the beginning. I'll uh, make sure it goes right back into that very first stitch hole there, and then I'll overstitch the first two or three stitches, and that is now tied in. Good to go. This is coming along swimmingly. I heard that somewhere. Couldn't tell you exactly what that means. <laughs> All right. The only other thing I'm going to sew on this piece is going to be my uh, around my maker's mark here. Here in a few minutes, we'll fold this top, uh, this front pocket in half, and that's what'll actually make a closed pocket out of it. Um, we'll fold it in half and uh, sew down the top of it. So there she be, in all her glory. And then we're going to stick these other two pieces together right quick. Let me zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. take my tape and put on the back of where I folded this over. I should have um, already done that, but I did not. So even though this is a curve, it's going to work the exact same way um, as the straight does. And I'm just going to peel off the back of the tape here if I can. And I'm going to just hand work it onto this zipper. 
making sure to maintain my distance from my uh, zipper uh, teeth so that there's room for the slide to move up and down without it touching the leather like we had talked about before. And again, it's, it's going to curl up and be curved. That's good. That's fine. That's what we want. So don't be, uh, don't be nervous if it is. at all when I get to the very bottom of it these two uh, ends will meet up just perfectly and they do okay so right there at the end that is a straight line all the way across the zipper to the other piece everything matches up well so now I just need to sew that line like I have the others Start out with a small back stitch, then I'm going to go forward. And once this stitch line is done, we're going to take a little break while I reset and get some other stuff ready and uh, move some pieces around. I'm always cautious of the zipper slide. I don't want to sew too close to it because it can actually make it to where the zipper tape um, moves as I sew, you can force it out from under the tape or whatever else. So I'm very careful about where the slide is when I start sewing. If this were a flat seam, I would actually unzip it some, start sewing, and then re-zip it, uh, re-zip it after I pass, or, uh, Sew part of it, and then zip the zipper past where I'd sewn, and then continue sewing. Um, the leather we're using here, this is part of our cowboy collection. Um, this is the red color. I really like it. My favorite is the tangerine color. It's, it's almost red, but it's got just more, a, a hint more orange to it, and uh, I, I really like it. I've, I've made myself a matching set of bags and, and a shaving kit with it, and um, I really do like the tangerine color. I need to get more of it in stock because I think I took the last hide out of the warehouse. Alrighty, so there we are. We're going to clip that off, and again, I'm going to move some pieces around and get ready for the next steps, and uh, we'll be right back. Alrighty, so um, the next thing we're going to do is these two little trapezoids that we uh, we folded and sewed the tops of. We're going to put them finish side to finish side. And I'm going to put a little clip right there at the very top. And I'll put another little clip there at the bottom. Okay, and I am lining up these top edges really nicely. Okay, um, they might be a little bit wonker jawed or whatever if you didn't get your fold exactly straight. I did not. So mine are just slightly askew when I um, when I clip them together. They're slightly uh, slightly offset. Just a tiny bit. It's fine. That's why we have such a fat margin for um, for a sew line there so that we can you know fudge things when needed. Um, and I'm going to just stick those two together. Okay. And when I sew these skived edges like this, I want my edge presser foot here. Let me zoom in as much as I can on that. And I already am. <laughs> Alright, so my edge presser foot here, I'll get a pointy thingy, is going to ride right along the edge of the skive. Okay? Um, just right where it goes from fat to skinny, that's where I want my, my presser foot to ride. Um, not the center foot, but the presser foot, which is the one on the outside there. I'm going to do a couple of back stitches here, and then I'm going to go forward. When I get to the end, I'll do a couple more back stitches, and I'll flip it around and do it to the other side. So there we go, there's one side complete. I'm going to 
second, I'm going to turn this thing right side out, and you're going to see why I love this leather so much. It's got a lot of great pull-up to it, uh, a lot of character. So pull-up is when you stress the leather, it uh, changes colors a little bit and lightens up a little bit. So unlike me, when you stress it, it lightens up. Um, yeah, so we're going to start out. Yeah, we'll start out down here. So now my, my presser foot's over here. Normally I don't put my presser foot onto the edge, but I need to make sure I climb this needle as close to that top rollover as I can without actually puncturing through it accidentally. So I'm gonna start out down there and uh, sew it that way. Actually, you know what? I'm being a fool. Let me just turn that over right there and now I can have my presser foot exactly how I want it. And uh, we can pretend like we've actually been doing this for 20 something years and not just started today, right? Couple of uh, back stitches there. We're gonna go forward. There we go. All right. Now, as promised, I said I was gonna turn this thing right side out, and you'll get to see that. Just trim off the very edges of this for a little bit. And then I will simply, say simply, there we go, open it up and fold it right side out. And again, that's going to stress that leather a good bit and it'll change colors and you'll get to see some of the pull up that's going to happen to this entire bag when it's. Uh, all said and done. It's not an easy thing to turn right side out on a leather like this. If this was a softer leather it would be easier, but this is a it's it's a slightly firm leather. That's gonna make an awesome bag. Um, I always laugh that the nice firmer leathers they make a make a really nice bag, but they are harder to deal with when doing things like turning the bag right side out. So anyway this is the original color, um, and then there's the stressed color. Uh, you can see this, the lines and stuff in it. To me, that, that patina, that, uh, that color change and everything is just absolutely gorgeous in a bag like this. Um, it's not for everybody, but you know what? Not everybody's my customer. <laughs> so, all right. I'm a big, I brush everything in the floor while I'm doing my project, and then I sweep the floor once as opposed to walking to the trash can 550 times throughout the process. Okay, next thing we'll do, let's go ahead and fold this sucker in half, but I need some double-sided tape first, and then we'll stitch along the top edge of it. I'm gonna run that double-sided tape just right along the, uh, the um, edges of the, the skived seams, or skived uh, sides. funny you can break this tape but it honestly is almost exhausting to break it and rip it. It never wants to rip where you want it to. I just find it easier to pick up my scissors every time I need to cut it. Okay. Throw these clips up here. I'll need them all when I'm putting the whole bag together. All right I am going to go ahead and pre-fold this bag. Let me zoom out a little bit here pre-fold this pocket over and that way I know that uh, you know everything's going to be hunky-dory when it comes time to uh, stuck to my tape hunky-dory when it's time to stick it on there I'm just going to fold it to where these seams or these edges perfectly match up down here I'll run my hand along and, and do a, almost like a crease I guess you could say Go. 
and that crease is really going to have a nice distress to it because it um, it's not skived right there. So I'm folding a, a nice thick piece of leather, relatively thick. This leather's um, I don't know, five ounce or so. All right, so now that that's creased, I have no fear to go ahead and pull off all this uh, backing of this tape, refold it, and uh, get it ready to sew. Okay, now when I refold it, I'm going to stick the bottom edge of it first. Make sure all that lines up before working my way around the sides and up to the top. Alright, for the life of me, I can't find my normal roller. I haven't found it in quite a while, actually. I need to just get another one, I guess. So I'm going to use this gigantic roller here. It weighs a lot, so it'll do the job. But that'll help me really define that edge so that when I go to sew it, there will be no doubt where that sewing machine needs to be. Okay? So now let's, let me check my bobbin and then we're going to stitch it. Whew! Thank goodness. Alright, so there was enough for that one line, but when my bobbin gets short, I don't mind wasting 10 feet of thread if that means I'm not going to screw up a stitch line. Throw another bobbin in here right quick. Really funny, I always joke when I do uh, classes, you know, we have 15 people running five or six sewing machines. I, have, I usually have some sort of a helper, assistant instructor, whatever you want to call them. And their main job is to walk around and change bobbins all day. <laughs> Just keep the machine sewing. That's all that needs to get done. Okay. Now, we'll start back here on the edge. Again, I'm going to have my... my uh, center foot just about an eighth of an inch away from the uh, the edge here. Start out with a back stitch or two. I'm using my finger as an edge guide. I'm just letting the leather slide right along the edge of my finger. As long as I don't move my finger, I'm not going to sew through it. people all the time to include Jenny Sue are always like, aren't you afraid of sewing your finger? Well, no, I'm not going to put it where the needle is. It may get close, but it's not going to get there. <laughs> all right, so the front pocket is done. Now we're going to put the main body of the bag together. Um, believe it or not, we're at 50% completion here. Alright, so what we have here are the top and bottom gussets. Okay, remember we did two of these big long pieces. One of them has a, a normal skive that matches the rest of the bag. The other one has a wider skive. The wider skive one is going to be uh, for the shoulder strap. Um, the normal one is going to be the, the bottom gusset of the bag. Okay, now I'm going to take on the, the short ends of this, okay, right here, and on the other end, I've got to take and fold those over to make a nice rolled edge. So just like we've done before, remove the tape, give it a foldy fold. And she's pretty. Okay, do the exact same thing on the other end. Now, if you're modifying or designing a bag like this, um, ordinarily I will clip the entire bag together, the front gusset and the back gusset and the front, or sorry, the top gusset, the side gusset. Let me think about my words here. The top gusset, the bottom gusset, and both the sides of the bag, I would clip them all together and then I would mark where gussets might need to be trimmed. But I've made seven or eight of these off this pattern, 
and I know that it all should line up just right when it's all said and done. If it does not, you will never see this video and it will uh, <laughs> be re-recorded. <laughs> but anyway. Alright, so um, this is going to sew back out some so we can see what we're doing here. Way it's kind of distracting. This piece is going to sew right here, right at that bottom half an inch that we saved after our zipper uh, was was put on. Okay, and then the other end of it sews onto the other end of this. So I'm going to take some double-sided tape and I'm going to stick all that together, um, one side at a time, and I'm going to stitch them. And when I'm done with that, I'm, I'm going to do an unnecessary step for most, but the tool patch that I made for the front of the bag needs to get sewn on at this time, because uh, here in just a few moments, um, it will all be part of the bag, and I, I need it sewn on before that. Okay, so I'm going to take that little rolled edge that I did, and I'm just going to lay it across here right at the end of those stops on the zipper. And it's okay if it doesn't just perfectly match up right here and right here, okay? There is a teeny, teeny little uh, width difference between these. That's all about, you know, how wide you made your skives or how far onto the zipper you sewed, stuff like that. It's, it's a fine variable to have. It, there's nothing wrong with, with having a little bit of space right there. Um, you don't want a lot of space, but a little bit of gap is just, just fine. Okay, so I'm going to sew that down. Start out with a back stitch as usual. And then I'm going to go forward, right across that seam. Again, I am not sewing through the zipper. The zipper is already done, and I am just past the, uh, the end stops of the zipper. And I'll bring this to the camera to show as soon as I'm done stitching it. Okay, and the bottom gusset is on top of the top gusset. I didn't specify that, but you will see it once I show it to you on the camera here. Okay, so now I'm going to flip it over and the other end of the gusset is going to go together over here in the exact same manner. Okay, make sure you don't have any twists in your gusset. If this thing is spiraled, then you are, well, it'd be a very interesting bag if you could pull it off. That's all I can say. If you can pull it off and complete the rest of the bag with a spiral right there, I would buy that bag because um, I'd be interested to see how you did it. <laughs> Every once in a blue moon, Janie Sue will get a new purse just because I buy one just to see how in the world they put it together because I'm intrigued. Not too many adult men are walking around looking at people stitching and how their purses are made and <laughs> stuff like that. So that's stitched together. Um, I'm going to pause the camera for a few minutes. I'm going to reset a couple things here and get my tool patch ready for the, uh, the front of the bag. And I uh, will show you sewing that on in case you're curious or want to do your own tool patch for the front of it. Um, yeah, grab it. Alright, so we're back. 
I uh, used tape and stuck that piece on there. It's going to look really good, especially once we get that pocket on there like that. I mean, seriously, that's, that's pretty nice. Now I want to make me one and yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to have to see if I have any more of the tangerine color that I can make uh, myself one of these and uh, do it the way I've been, I did all my matching bags. Alright, and I'm just going to take and run my sewing machine right around my tooled piece. I did not leave myself a very wide border and I know better, but I don't know. It was like 4 o'clock this morning and I wasn't thinking like I should. across the bottom, now we gotta run around the outside, run the outside, run the outside. I don't wanna get too fast because I uh, gotta make this long sweeping curve here and I need the stitch line to be nice and even all the way around it. And for the most part, making all of my turning motions while the needle is down. However, since this is such a slight turn in between stitches, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, another reason we make our turns while the needle is down is to ensure that we're not pulling the, the top thread out of the way of the uh, shuttle hook to grab it down there in the bobbin area. If you understand how a sewing machine works, you know exactly what I meant. If you don't understand how a machine works, if I stop to explain it, I will screw up, guaranteed. <laughs> I have a hard time concentrating and working sometimes, you know. I'm sure you've seen that if you've watched any of my videos. There we go. We're at the bottom again. I'll run back over to my original stitch and we're going to be good to go. stitched on there. Okay, I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna cut that bobbin thread. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab my clips and stuff and we're gonna start clipping the gusset to the, uh, the main body here and uh, we're gonna begin our what we call final assembly and putting the front, the back, and the sides all together. We'll be back. Alright, so now we're going to take the gusset that we already put together and we're going to clip it to the front part of the bag. But part of the front of the bag is also this here pocket that we also made. Okay, so what we need to do is figure out where the camera's looking. <laughs> Go. All right. I do not like to use tape in turn seamed bags. Um, my, my biggest fear is I turn the bag right side out and then there's a line of tape right there coming out of the seam. It's impossible to get out. It looks shiny and then it gets dirty and then it looks dirty and ew. Okay. That says cheaply made elsewhere, not made in my workshop or hopefully your workshop. So that being said, this piece right here is a lot easier with some tape between the pocket and the front panel. We will not use tape between the, the, the entire front assembly and the gusset so that when we turn it right side out you still won't see any tape um, no matter how poor of a job we may or may not do. Um, it, it's safer to put or safe to put the tape in there and it also is safe to uh, not have slippage when we go to sew all those layers together okay so I'm just gonna put the tape right along the edge I'm not really as worried about the corners as I am just the front uh, the left the right and the middle 
uh, bottom piece, okay? And again, this is a very rare occurrence. Normally, I wouldn't dare put any tape inside the seam of a bag. And again, I mean, I could very carefully sew and make sure that I sew within my tape line and blah, 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 but I'd rather just not risk it at all. I, I don't take risks when it comes to this. I take risks when I'm driving 10 miles an hour over the speed limit, but not when I'm doing sewing. <laughs> all right, so here we go. That's taped. I'm just gonna fold this back to pull the, the backing of the tape off here. And here. Not so much here and here, but right along here. Okay, I'm gonna stick that down. Now my bottom line is very lined up, but I'm still gonna look, since I have this tool piece, I need to make sure I'm lined up with it. I don't want that thing to look crooked. Okay. And it's exactly how I want it. It looks like it's kind of coming out of the pocket just a tiny bit. And uh, yeah. So the other option is to just sew these two together real quick. Just right smack along the very edge. And then to go back and uh, clip it to your uh, next piece after that. And as a matter of fact, we'll just do that. For extra strength and a little bit of reassurance, Let's just sew it on there real quick. Just right smack along the very edge. We don't need a pretty stitch line at all because this is all going to be hidden inside the next seam. But if we make sure that it is uh, sewn together, then when we go to sew the next part on, we're not gonna accidentally have this pocket slip out. just have it double stuck taped and sewn not worried about slippage at all now finding my centers okay now it is still possible to put this bag together crooked and we don't want to do that now at all also I'm gonna unzip this just a tiny bit so that it uh, so that that zipper tab doesn't happen to wind up under a sewing needle and break something all right I'm gonna find my centers so I need my rulers bag is uh, I think 10 inches wide yep right at 10 inches wide so I'm just gonna make me a little mark right at the center at the bottom here it'll be down in the seam nobody will ever see it and then the same up here I'm using a nice big wide ruler so I know where my uh, my edges are okay and if I make sure that the centers of my front and the centers of my gusset are um, perfectly aligned, then uh, the bag won't end up crooked. Okay, so here I'll take this thing and I'll just fold it in half. And that will tell me where my centers are on it. So, there's a center, and there's a center. We're just going to clip all the way around. Again, I'm going to line up my center points where I made my little marks. Okay, there's the top. Up at the bottom center. There it is. There's the bottom. And then I'm just going to line them up as I work my way around and I'm going to put my clips every couple of inches, maybe even more often. I've had projects where I wasn't too sure about my seam work and I, I mean I clipped that sucker where the clips were almost touching each other. Okay, so now we just get to work our way around. Um, I've got the bottom good and secure. I'm going to reline the top here, make sure my, my centers are right on top of each other. 
Where did my mark go? Dang it. Sorry, I gotta refine my top center. There it is. couple on there so that thing doesn't slide around on me. Okay. clips and again if I have any any slack or any any spots where it doesn't line up just perfectly then I'll work the, work those issues out when I get to them there's always some sort of hiccup in there it's never exactly right no matter how many times I make the same pattern or the same bag um, there's always going to be a variation between different types of leather different thicknesses different um, the temper of the leather you know how 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 soft or, or um, firm it is, stuff like that. The good news about this particular leather is it's kind of stretchy. So as I get down here into the corner, I can just kind of stretch those pieces to flatten to each other. I'm excited, I've not made one of these bags out of this, this type of leather, but I really do love this type of leather. Or bags. So the lucky winner of this, or recipient of this bag, however they plan on doing it, um, if you if you happen to end up watching this video, I, uh, I hope you leave me a comment about it. <laughs> a good comment. If you have a bad comment, send me an email. <laughs> side clipped now I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side okay you can see where it's all clipped together uh, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side uh, but I'm not gonna force you to watch it for another five minutes while I do just know I'm, I'm gonna clip this other side the exact same way if I run into any issues or anything I think we need to talk about I'll turn the camera back on and we'll get there otherwise we're gonna be sewing this the next time we see it all right your angle has changed because as the camera was on that side, um, the left side of my sewing machine, everything I'm about to do would be blocking your view. Um, this, this bag is now standing almost four inches tall, and you wouldn't be able to see the needle area of my sewing machine, okay? So when I sew a bag like this together, I usually stop, start and stop in the bottom, kind of in the middle. Um, it's just uh, when you get all the way around, if you've got a little bit of excess material on one side or the other, um, the bottom is a nice big flat area where you can kind of move that material and manipulate it and uh, make it work. Okay, so I'm going to get that light out of your way. Try to be as good of an angle here as I can. Alright, make sure my shoulder is not going to be in your way once I turn back to my machine. Alright. So here we go, I don't need to back stitch because I'm going all the way around the project. And I'm gonna stitch along, slow and sure. And when I get to a clip, I just pull it off. Just like that. Okay, um, it's relatively easy, it's flat. Um, and as I go around corners and everything, I mean, all I have to do is kind of rotate it through. No huge deal. The biggest thing is, while you're doing this, is to make sure that you don't sew any bubbles or wrinkles into the corners or even into the sides of the bag, because you will not get them back out. Okay, they are there to stay once they're sewn in. So that's why I manipulate the corners the way I am, where I fold down a little bit at a time as I go all the way around. We've got this nice big wide sky area that we can, you know, take up as much or as little of it as we need. 
but generally I like to keep my, my edge presser foot right there where it goes from thick to thin. They do make these fancy little um, clips specifically for uh, fabric sewing. Um, they're plastic and they, they work. Uh, they work well, um, but they're prone to breaking. I find that, you know, like a lot of the time I got to put a lot of pressure on these things and um, I, I've broken quite a few. So I did buy a bunch of them once, but I have not replaced them as I broke them. I just went back to using my metal binder clips because they can handle my level of abuse. I like to think I'm not abusive, but I am the things like binder clips. <laughs> oh, and tacos. I'll tear some tacos up, as you can tell. <laughs> okay, as I go around the top, real easy, just like the bottom corners will just kind of fold back a little bit at a time so I can see my needle and everything as I walk around. And consistency is key. I just want to keep it kind of going in the straight, straight and narrow right, uh, right along my scabbed area. The uh, bottom half that we're going to sew together, the, uh, the backing of it and everything is a little bit more difficult. Um, just because there's some extra pieces we have to put in there, such as the... Uh, that little trapezoid we sewed for the top and stuff like that. Generally, I won't turn a bag right side out until everything is sewn. But on this one, I'm kind of excited to see how well we did with our uh, tooled piece, how well we followed the edge and stuff like that. Um, the class I'm going to give at the Waco uh, show on this bag, uh, Don Gonzalez is going to help us uh, by giving a class on the tool piece. Like if you take his tooling class the day before my bag class, one of your options will be that you can tool a piece that will go on your bag. We decided that was the best way to collaborate where it doesn't force people to take both of our classes, but it is an option. All right, the difficult part's done. Now we just got to get back to our beginning of our sew line. stretch. Everything has gone together really, really well. Makes me think that the back part's going to give me lots of fits. <laughs> the front part went on so daggum easy. Because <laughs> that's how the life of a craftsman goes. Alright, back to our original stitch uh, holes. And I'm going to go make sure my needle falls straight into place of the original couple of stitches do my overstitching over my first couple and that'll tie it off now before I turn it right side out I am going to trim these corners um, sorry can't see but these corners uh, just a little bit um, if I trim them then I find that it, it lays a little bit better and once you turn it turn the gusset the right way So just real quick with my scissors, take and just trim a little bit of the excess off. I don't want to get too close to my stitching. That would be really bad. Um, you don't want to accidentally cut your stitches or make it so weak and thin at that point that it would uh, easily rip those stitches out. And that's the kind of stuff that will make you start over right there. <laughs> All right, I'm going to zoom this out and I'm going to turn my bag right side out and we'll see how it did. Hopefully it did great, because we're pretty far along. Oh, that's going to be great. Pull this seam 
transmission back out on the B. Oh, I'm excited right there. Check that sucker out. All right, and then the same thing, we're gonna tr tr trim along the uh, the inside of the top seam there so that that lays a little bit better where it's trying to kind of waffle up inside there. But man, I'm excited. I'm a little bit jealous that I don't have one of these that's tooled and here I am making one for another company. <laughs> All right, um, again, I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna kind of reset some things and we're gonna start uh, clipping the back parts on and more sewing. Okay, so as we're about to put the back on, we need to do a couple of things. One, I took some of my uh, bag leather and cut out a couple of little strips, roughly two inches or so long and one inch wide. And these are gonna hold our D-rings. Okay, we're gonna have D-rings in both the bottom back corners of the bag for the uh, the sling attachment to uh, to attach to, and we're putting them in both corners so that it can be interchanged from right right to left side as the uh, the wearer of it sees fit. Versatile. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little piece of tape in there and fold this uh, leather around that D-ring. Again, this is just the same leather that the rest of the bag's made out of. going to take these two and also this piece right here and I'm going to sew them onto this back piece kind of like how we did the the pocket under the front piece just so that we know that it's going to be exactly where it needs to be when we need it to be there um, I am going to put a little piece of tape let me get some of my thinner tape and uh, there it is I am going to put a little piece of tape just on the inside of the trapezoid, not on the sewn end, but on the on the open end down here, just to help keep that closed while we stitch that in together. There we go. And I'm gonna flatten it on the seams, making sure I'm not twisting it accidentally. Okay. And um, I'm just going to center it right to left across the top there. And um, I'm going to run a small stitch, uh, just like we did on that pocket on the front, just to hold it in place so that it doesn't move when we go to sew everything else together. And we're going to do the same thing for those little D-ring pieces we just created. So I want to sew them right out there on the very edge. I don't want to uh, get my seam too far in. I didn't even back stitch, that's fine. Again, I'm holding it just long enough to get the, the next stitch in. Okay. So there's that. It's difficult because I got the camera invading my personal space and where I sit here. I kind of slid over so that the camera can see more than I can. All right. Now these, I can kind of feel down there where that skive is. And I want that D-ring to be right at the edge of my skive. Okay, or just past it, I guess you can say. And then I want it where this is rounded here. I want it just at the top of the where it goes straight again. Okay. And again, I'm just going to put a couple little stitches in there real quick. Just to hold her in place. And I, and I want to make sure it's straight. I don't want it askew, you know. I think that's twice I used that big fancy word. I'm going to have to call my algebra teacher from high school and tell her thanks. Or I guess that would be geometry. Thank you, Mrs. Baker. There's that one. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side with the other one. When I come back, I'm going to clip the back of this bag together just like I did the front. Except it's actually going to be easier because with these corners, I know exactly where it should line up on the tops. It's not, it's not all big and round like the other side is that I have to be like, well, I think this is the top center. 
All right. There we go. Now we can clip this bad boy together. Okay. So, here I've got the rest of my bag. Now I'm going to bring up something that's extremely important. Here I am about to sew this bag completely closed. Okay, if I don't open that zipper right there before I do that, and just open it far enough to get a hand in there, I can assure you that I will have another pocket in this bag because I'm going to have to cut it open to get my hand in there to unzip it. It is extremely difficult uh, to unzip it once it's sewn shut with the zipper pull on the inside. Um, this is not a locking zipper, but that doesn't matter sometimes. Um, zippers are very difficult to open if you don't have the little pull thingy to pull on. Okay? Alright, I'm going to start clipping this bad boy together. and I'm going to start right here on top. Line up those corners on the top. Put a clip right in the middle. And then just start working my way down both sides. Okay? This bag has gone together extremely well, and that, that really brings me a lot of pride because that tells me that my pattern is just spot on. Um, again, I, I designed this bag a couple of years ago, um, but I really I didn't I didn't like how it went together. Um, it's one of the reasons I never really did a lot with it. Uh, so anyway, that being said, though I uh, I did make one little change to the design, and that made it so much easier to use and produce. And, uh, yeah, now I'm happy with it. Sorry, I'm just moving this down just a little bit. These corners aren't quite as lined up as I want them to be. There we go. All right, and again, I'm going to work my way just down both sides. I'll put a few clips on one side, a few clips on the other side. And when I get to the bottom, they should all line up. Uh, I'm not going to make you watch me do it. If it doesn't line up and there's something we need to discuss, again, I'll turn the camera back on so you can see it. All right, folks, we got her all clipped up. And we're ready to sew. Make it sew. Um, so the bottom half is a little bit more difficult to sew because the top half gets in the way. Um, it, wants to, it wants to bump into the end of my sewing machine and stuff like that. You just have to manipulate it as best you can. Um, this is where building it out of a softer leather really helps. But again, building it out of a more rigid leather makes a nicer bag. So there's that happy balance in there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'll just kind of push down up here on the, on the top so that I can, and especially where this pocket is and stuff, it's just really difficult. Um, to, to squeeze it under the machine without losing all your place. Get my light back over here. So I am. I apologize if my hands get in the way, but I'm sewing the top, bottom just like I did the top, or the back just like I did the front. I'm sorry, I'm losing my direction. Okay, and uh, just like the front, I did not uh, do any kind of a back stitch because as I go around it, I will. Um, I'll just come right back and, and stitch over my first couple of stitches again. You will find as I as I do the back side here, sometimes I'll sew in spurts where I'll do a few stitches and then I kind of move move some material around a little bit to keep from uh, getting any kind of a bubble or a wrinkle in there. And then I'll sew a few more stitches and move some more stuff, especially in the corners. And when we get up here to the straightaways, we go a lot quicker. All right, so here I am. I need to step up over this area where I've sewn in this, uh, sorry, this D-ring here, okay? Um, not a problem at all. I just am going to, I'm going to gently push with my knee onto my knee lift, which lifts my presser foot, and that'll help me just kind of walk that over it, and the, the presser foot won't get stuck on... Uh, the edge of that where it goes thick. There we 
There we go. Like it was meant to be. And the other thing I have to watch is these clips like to hang onto the edge of my sewing machine table as they, um, you know, as the, the, the bag advances onto the table. So I just gotta be cognizant of that. If I feel any kind of a drag or it tries to move left or right, that's usually what's wrong is one of these clips is stuck to my table somewhere. No big deal, but that's why we go slow. Straightaways get exciting and you get so quickly. <laughs> okay, so as I go across the top, same thing. I'm gonna have to climb up onto a thicker portion of the of the leather, so I'm using my knee down here under the table to lift that presser foot ever so slightly. I'm just kind of taking some pressure off of it. I'm not actually lifting it. If I lift it, then I'll lose my needle position and um, the bag will just all willy-nilly be able to move under the needle and we definitely don't want that. Nobody likes willy-nilly. One day, Janie Sue was doing something and I don't remember what it was, but just kind of lackadaisically doing something and I said the words willy-nilly, <laughs> you know, I was like, hey, we don't, we don't just do that all willy-nilly and I mean, you would think I was speaking Chinese. She's like, what does that mean? And I'm like, huh? <laughs> term I've heard all my life. Okay, so I'm coming up to the other side, and again, the, the top of the bag is kind of getting into the way of the, uh, or the front side of the bag is kind of getting in the way and wanting to press against my sewing machine, so I've just got to be cognizant of that and slowly work it through. Okay, back to our second D-ring, so I'm going to lift a little bit with my knee, release some of the pressure off the uh, presser foot. So right into a clip there. There we go, still pulled it out. I have uh, possibly um, had times when I didn't pay attention and sewed right through a daggum clip. <laughs> Luckily, I've not damaged a machine doing it. I have lost a couple of clips, though. I don't want to be my friends after I sew through them for some reason. Mean old clips. Alright, back to the home stretch. Right across the bottom there. Assembly of the bag is complete. I'm gonna pull it out from under this machine here, inspect everything before we turn it right side out, and then we're gonna have what I call the moment of truth. 
It's when you turn it right side out and make sure you can't see daylight from the inside of your bag. <laughs> All right, um, so where these these D-rings are, I've got these overhanging, I'm on camera here, there they are. I've got these overhanging areas. I'm just gonna snip those right off right quick with some scissors. Okay, by the way, I do know how to say the word scissors, I just, you know. Okay. Sorry, I did that off camera and I apologize. Um, I trimmed up these corners down here, these bottom corners and these top corners right here. I kind of locked them up a little bit. So when I turn it right side out, there's not a big bubble of material up underneath there. All right, so now it is time to turn this thing right side out. Um, I'm going to do it slowly, methodically. Uh, normally, if I'm wearing my watch and stuff, I'll take them off right now um, because I don't want to scratch up my leather. Okay, but I don't have a watch on, um, so I don't have to worry about that. And then the other thing I can do is kind of pre-fold my, sorry, my wife is calling, I better answer. All right, and a fair warning, the more rigid that your leather is, again, this is the part that gets really difficult, is turning it right side out. Um, I try really hard not to uh, scratch the leather with my, um, my fingernails, they're not obsessively long by any means, but it's still a possibility. But uh, this right here, turning things right side out, is the reason I don't make tooled footballs anymore. I used to. I used to make a lot of them. I even wrote an article about it once. I'm going to try to get the back end of it, or the bottom end of it, to where I can grab it and pull it through the top end. And the other thing I'm going to watch out for is my zipper. I don't want it to scratch all the leather as I come through. So I just, there's a million things to work on while you do this. And it may take some time and you may have to be extra, extra, extra careful. And if it takes all day, that's better than ruining something. Okay? You don't want to stress your zipper too much. You don't want to stress your seams too much. You just want to turn your bag as best you can without hurting anything or yourself. <laughs> This is where, if you're using a leather like this that has a lot of uh, pull-up to it, you, you're about to see some pull-up. <laughs> you will expose all the pull-up. There we go. There's my strap hanger. I can kind of pull on it. Help turn some of this. getting somewhere, I promise. That tooled area is going to be the most difficult. Um, this bag wasn't really designed to have such a rigid spot on the top of it. That's okay. It sure does look cool. <laughs> there we go. Once over half of it's done, then the rest of it's just kind of massaging it out. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I am excited. This looks great. Okay, I'm going to take and just poke my fingers in here in the corners and get everything nice and straightened out there. But check that bag out. Oh, I'm excited. I'll go. And everywhere I have a seam, I usually will pinch it down just to help it form itself and, and uh, you know, kind of stretch the leather to the, way, to the places it needs to be. And then every time I make a bag too, when I'm done with it, I'll take and fill it full of something, wadded up paper, an old towel, or something, um, so that for the next day or two as it sits, it'll kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, it'll, it'll kind of set its memory for how it should, should be sitting. Okay, there we go, we're going to make sure it still zips up, and it zips up beautifully. With that, somebody is going to have a heck of a bag. 
Seriously, I'm, I'm going to have to call the Justin folks and tell them, I'm, I'm sorry, I know I entered into an agreement with you, but I want to... <laughs> anyway, um, alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we need to build the shoulder strap for this. Um, so give me a few minutes and I'll get the stuff together for that. And uh, we'll sew that up and then we'll be back over at the desk just applying a couple of final rivets and, and, and things like that. Alright, so here I have a one inch long strap, or one inch wide strap that is very long, of uh, s s the same vegetable tanned leather that I used on the, the front of the bag. Um, and then I have my other big piece that we, we had the wider skive on, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to put a big old piece of double sided tape right down the middle of it. This is the back side of it, of course. Okay, big old piece of double sided tape. Um, if you only have thin tape, that's fine, do two strips. But we're going to put it right down the middle. About like so. I want to make sure it's not sticking out the other end. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up folding these two ends in on the skive. Again, uh, this leather's a little bit thinner so it's not necessary to actually skive all this but it, it I, I want this to not have such a uh, super thick uh, strap you know it's not a heavy-duty backpack it doesn't need huge straps um, but again there, there's nothing wrong with it it's just my preference and what I want on this bag okay so I'm just gonna fold that over and hope that it sticks <laughs> longer than half a second there and I do have to really work hard to make sure that this is nice and even all the way down or else it won't look right and I want it to look right. Maybe I should have done two rows of thinner tape instead of one row of thick. And this is just like I was talking about before. If I do it several fingers wide then you don't see any ripples where I would just have one finger pressing it over there, you know? I'm done with this, I'm going to take my one inch wide strap and lay it across the seam that this creates and then we'll sew down both sides and it'll make a very nice looking strap that's super easy to make. Lucky. strip of tape and run right across that middle part there and that's what my one inch strap will stick to um, I highly suggest not to use one inch wide tape for this use three quarter inch and that way you don't accidentally have some tape sticking out from one side or the other in case you don't get it 1000% straight okay uh, my shoulder strap piece is uh, it's about 7 ounces, um, it, it was 10 ounces, I ran it through my splitter, I, I don't, again this is not a heavy duty backpack, um, so I'm not trying to make heavy heavy duty straps for it. Alright, just like that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start sewing on one, 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 one side of this and I'm going to sew all the way up and then I'll just sew across real here, quick here at the end. This is going to be inside that trapezoid piece and then back down the other side and that'll be how this is affixed a, a to itself here. Okay, so here we go. Alrighty. Do a quick back stitch first. we go. 
you notice my, my fingers are not moving. I'm just allowing the strap to kind of slide in between them. I'll just barely push with my thumbs if I need to straighten something. Okay, now again, at the very end here, I'm going to uh, just sew across the top. Uh, that will not be seen. I'm only doing it so I don't have to cut my stitch and um, start again on the other side. It's just the lazy part of me coming out. Um, if you disassemble a bunch of things that are professionally made, you'll, you'll see a lot of that. It's not just me. <laughs> Alright, now we're at the other side and we're going to slide right back down it. the sewing machine on this project so the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, I've got to reset all the cameras and lights and I say all the cameras the one camera and the two lights um, <laughs> I need to reset all those so that I'm back at my workbench again so when we come back that's exactly where we'll be we're gonna set a few rivets and complete this strap and uh, talk about how great of a day it's been all right folks we're back at the workbench so first thing I'm gonna do is attach the the wide end of this strap to the bag itself that way we can kind of figure out how long it needs to be now that being said on this one i'm going to do something a little extra and i'm going to make it adjustable um, but generally i make this just kind of one size to you know fit whoever i'm making it fit um, so i need a hole punch because i'm going to set a brass rivet in there okay um, brass rivets look like that right there I'm going to take my hole punch and make sure my, my strap is nice and squared coming straight out the top of the bag. And I'm going to punch a couple of holes through the trapezoid, through the strap, and uh, maybe all the way through the second trapezoid. If not, I'll remove the strap and uh, keep hitting it down there. Okay, that one went all the way through. Now I'm going to set a second one below it. Okay, there we go. Now so that my strap doesn't fall out when I uh, turn it over, I'm gonna put me a couple of rivets in there. I'm needing a big heavy anvil for this job. All right, I'm gonna make sure that my, uh, my bag is not on my cutting board because that cutting board is rough and I don't wanna scratch up my bag. All right. So, rivets, how they set. So we've got this little washer, and it's going to go on top of the rivet, like so, and like so. Then I've got this tool here, a rivet setter, that sets down over that post. Give it a couple of whacks. Another post. A couple of whacks. And there you go. That sucker's already pretty solid, but we're going to make it more solid. First, I need to cut those rivets off. Okay, that is way too long of a post there. So I got me some compound leverage cutters. Really gotta watch your eyes with these because they uh, they fly pretty good. Anyway, and then this little tool is domed, and what I'm gonna do is hit it, and it's gonna mushroom off the top of that rivet and kind of round it off. But I'm going to go one step further and I'm going to use my uh, my ball peen hammer here. And do it even more. And then I usually run my fingers over it to make sure it doesn't, if it doesn't catch my finger uh, fingerprint, um, then it's not going to catch uh, clothing or, you know, a, a thread or something like that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is going to involve more rivets. We're going to set this aside for a moment. I have another piece of my shoulder strap leather here. And um, again, I'm going to make this one adjustable, so I'm going to put a buckle in it. Okay? Not something I usually do, but um, again, this one's for... Uh, I don't know who the end recipient will be of this bag. So we have to make it adjustable so that it can fit them. 
Alrighty, so I'm going to go down a couple of inches because I'm also going to put a keeper on here. So I'm going to go down a couple of inches and put me a, this is called a bag punch, also known as an oblong punch. And what it does is it cuts the, buck, the hole, the slot needed for the buckle. Okay, just like that. Now, on the other end, I'm going to have this clip here, and that way it can be clipped to either the left or the right side of the bag. Those two bottom D-rings that we put on there, that's what that's for. So, I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to run this sucker back up, and what I'm going to do is the easiest way to, I know to set this. So I measure to where it's just short when I bring it back. I want it just short of where the... the, the um, tongue of the buckle is inside the strap there okay and I'm gonna cut it off right there now I will take a half round punch and round the two ends of that just for aesthetic purposes Everything is really popping loud today I don't know why Alright, I have me a little mark there that I just made with my fingernail, so that's going to be the end of that strap. There we go. So, I'm going to fold it over just like that, and I'm going to put two rivets in it, one on each end here, okay? But in between those two rivets, like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to create a little keeper um, so that the end of the strap has something to slide down into, and it's not just out there flopping and looking all like we discussed earlier, willy-nilly. Okay? We don't do willy-nilly. So, I'm going to go ahead, though, and um, punch those holes while I've got this thing folded up like this. together for, for a second. I'm not uh, setting them yet because I got to get that keeper in there. If I set these and then tried to slide a keeper behind them I would have a lot of trouble in my hands. Okay. Now I don't know if I left myself enough leather on this. Yeah that's plenty. Okay so what I have to do is if this goes through one layer of this, and then my shoulder strap also, sorry, I'm my bag back up here, then how long does it need to be? It's getting difficult to hold all this stuff together. Okay. There's where I need to cut this, and then I'm going to um, quickly just whip stitch it together. Okay. Let me use a uh, stitching fork. Let me find the one I'm looking for here. There it is. Yeah. one more time normally I don't do all this on one of these straps I just make it to fit whoever's getting the bag usually it's gonna be me or my wife <laughs> people ask me you know well, what do you do with all the stuff you make on the YouTube videos I know some of it ends up being store displays uh, a lot of the time when local groups come by and they're doing a charity auction for you know sometimes there's a sick family member involved or something like that or an accident has happened I donate a lot of stuff to things like that 
and uh, that helps us get rid of some of the bags, and it helps them raise some money, so it helps everybody. Alright, I just grabbed, it doesn't matter what color, but I just grabbed some random thread here. Grab a couple of needles, or a needle. And again, I'm just going to whip stitch this thing to hold together. side and out the other. I'm not doing any fancy stitch work at all. I just need it to go together. Maybe even not pull apart. <laughs> there we go. Alright, so all I'm going to do is put the needle in one side and out the other. Twisty twisty up one side and then back down the other side. When I come back, this thing's going to be sewn together and it'll have little X's on the back of it. Super easy to do. Alright, so no need to make you watch me do it. And uh, I'll be right back. Alright, we are back. There it is, my ugly stitching job. We'll never ever ever see the light of day. It's okay. So, we got to pull one end off of this thing. Slide this onto that end. Do, 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 do. Okay, and then I fold these back over how they were. Not forgetting my uh, clip. Now, look, kind of important. The clip is facing, the open end of it is facing down when the open end of the buckle, the tongue, is facing up. Okay, otherwise it's going to be backwards. And while still functional, it will look a little silly. So let's save save that headache before it even becomes a headache, huh? Alright. Now I'm ready to set these rivets again. Let me grab, I don't have the backs to them. Got all that ready and didn't have the backs. We've got all these on a nail cup, and it's really funny because they fall down into the nail cup, and the uh, the little washers just slide down to the bottom of the cup, and I can't reach them very easily. All right, so again, I got my setter. Hit that thing first. Snippy snip. And we're going to dome it out. And I'm going to flatten it out. This does work best if I bring it off here where I get it. Flat hit. Hit. Okay, now I've got a piece that I can, let me re -dome that little piece there. There we go. Now it's not going to catch a finger or a thread or whatever. Okay, now I can clip this where it belongs down here and that way I can kind of put it on and figure out how The bag would be worn like this, whether it's on the front or the back. And uh, this wraps around here, this wraps up here, 
basically I'm trying to figure out like I'm a bigger guy okay the likelihood of the person receiving this being bigger than me is pretty small so I basically am just figuring out where the longest hole needs to be and then we'll make holes for several inches so that smaller people can also wear this bag okay we got about eight inches of play here seven or eight inches got me a fancy little tool just for stuff like this so that I can center my holes without having to draw a line down the middle of my strap. Check this thing out. Now, first off, let me make my first hole so I know where I'm looking at. Alright. Using this as a guide, I will go along and I'll just mark where other holes should be. Um, let's do this thing's not necessarily broken down into certain inch increments, but I'd be willing to bet these are about an inch and a half apart that I'm doing here but they will be evenly spaced that's what matters it doesn't matter what the spacing is it matters that they're even okay and then way down here I'm going to lop the end of that strap off now I got some strap to didn't quite get that good, did I? Now I've got some strap to play with for the uh, next one. All right. So, just like a belt, we will attach the buckle to the end of my strap. Slide that down into its keeper. And we are done, folks. This is going to be one heck of a prize for somebody, however they deem fit to do that. Um, but yeah, I am super excited. I'm actually super jealous. Um, I'm going to be making myself one out of a similar leather now. Um, I thought I'd picked my favorite leather to make one of these bags out of, but I had not because here it is. <laughs> So anyway, uh, until next time, guys, again, this has been sponsored by Justin Boots. I greatly appreciate them reaching out, and uh, yeah, it's been really fun, really exciting. I, I absolutely love doing fun projects. Um, so I appreciate them. I appreciate each of y'all for watching, and uh, if you need the patterns for this, they're on our website at makersleathersupply.com. Have a great day.